I recognize the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Grothman, for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, first of all, a general comment, because some of these things just really irritate me. Um, it, it bothers me that we have people before me today who so find it so easy to print so much money, because when you do that and create inflation, you are just destroying the people on fixed incomes on pensions, You're, well, which eventually will really rip into people whose savings were there their whole life. They rely on that savings. They think it's going to be when they retire. All of a sudden, the value of the dollar falls. And for you, it's just like no big deal. It's my money. It's my pension. I can do with it whatever I want because I'm part of the government. And you have hurt people so much through this inflation. I think for the first time since I've been in politics, there's genuine fear back home as you've drive, driven, not just cost of gas, but the cost of housing through the roof. I think the amount of inflation, the official numbers are way understated. And you really may have taken big steps towards, towards destroying the American dream. I think as far as talking about people who couldn't work during the pandemic, when I go home at night, I go buy three cheese plants, big cheese plants. And I saw those people because they were considered required working or necessary working. They were, they were, those plants were, the parking lots were filled even if I went home at midnight. There were people working three shifts around the clock and they didn't have a problem doing it. And to this day, I believe a lot of the pe government people who ordered people at home ordered people at home unnecessarily because all those working people who provide our food, they were out there working all the time and people shouldn't have ordered all these other people to stay at home. Uh, now I will comment a little around the time that this debacle, and, and I'll, I'll mention, I should say debacles because not only this bill that we're looking at today, but that, uh, that infrastructure bill, was another complete debacle, another over trillion dollars just put into the economy like it wasn't gonna hurt anything. Um, but we'll, we'll give Mr. Moore a question here. Um, uh, one of the things I notice over time, and it's maybe one of the reasons why I'm afraid we're gonna have a poor America, is the over time lowering labor rate participation of men. I don't care if we take men across the board, men age 25 to 55, there has over a period of years been a dramatic decrease in the labor participation right there. I'm not sure how much is kind of this uh, anti-man feeling that's out there. I don't know how much is across the board unemployment benefits, but could you comment on the reduction in the percentage of men working both over the last 10 years and over the last 30 years? <clears throat> Look, uh, it, economics really isn't very complicated, uh, Mr. Grothman. Um, if you pay people not to work, they won't work. And if you uh, if you uh, increase the rewards to working, you'll get more work. It's it's not complicated. This is just just the, a law of economics, and that's why I mentioned earlier in my testimony. And I'll go back to that. We should have cut the payroll tax. We shouldn't have expanded all these programs. I mean, this idea that, that all we have to do is give people money. I mean, one of the previous witnesses saying, "Oh, we gave people money for health care. We gave money for their food. We gave money for people for money for the rent. We gave." I mean, wouldn't it be a wonderful world if we could solve all our economic problems by just giving people money? I, I think. I it would be a wonderful yeah. thing. <laughs> I wish that worked. I think you're hitting on something that should be obvious. Larry Summers, one of Obama's yep. top advisors, said at the time, I think this is the least responsible economic policy in 40 years. Um, I think more recently, Steve Ratner, Democrat, the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan passed in the early days of the Biden administration will go down in history as an mm -hmm. extraordinary policy mistake. And I think that's what happens when we have people who think that the reason America is a great vibrant economy and the envy of the rest of the world, probably almost since we were founded, uh, is because we believe in freedom, okay? And we believe in people making their own wealth and finding a job and earning their own money. And there are other people who think wealth comes from the government either printing money or taxing money or going deeper into debt. And obviously those people right now are running the show. Everything any lobbyist could think of or any cool idea that one of the squad could think of wound up in these bills. And now here we set the, I think the only way, I'll ask you, I think the only reason way to get rid of the inflation, you look how we got rid of inflation in the 80s. It wasn't good, although we eventually did get rid of it. 
And it's something we've got to get rid of to get America back on the straight and narrow. And I don't know whether we have elected officials anymore who have the integrity to say no to the people back home or whether they think they run for re-election, uh, putting on their campaign literature, look at all the money I took from, from the public and and spread out for everybody under the sun. I, I, uh, I Like I said, I think of all those hardworking people in my district who were working third shift through this thing without complaining a bit. And, and, and nevertheless, we had politicians ordering people to stay at home. And after they ordered them to stay at home, they pretended like it was something beyond their control. It's just unbelievable. Well, Mr. Brotman, at the peak of the, um, when we were paying people $600 a week on employment benefits, plus rental assistance, plus expanded food stamps, plus Medicaid, plus the $300 ch child per credit, uh, Casey Mulligan of the University of Chicago and I did a study that found that you could, you had families in many states with two parents and two kids that could make eighty dollars to $100,000 in government benefits and not work a single hour. And the reason I mention that, you know who that's unfair to? The people you're talking about, the people working double shifts, and sometimes triple shifts working 50 hours work and they're making less money than people on look i'm for a safety yes act. nobody gives a damn about the working man nowadays yep. nobody cares about the working man uh, uh, gentlemen's time has expired thank, oh by the way just wanted to comment part of that free spending happened a little bit under uh, our buddy trump too you it gotta did. admit yeah it's the cares act as well yep okay gentlemen's time has expired and now we're